me also ask you about uh, the issues that we have seen this winter with massive flight delays across the airline sector. And these are also issues we see in the airline industry globally. But now, speaking about some of the issues with the Indian airline sector that we have seen in this winter, uh, the shortage of Cat 3 trained pilots. How are you looking to overcome this issue? Uh, upskilling of pilots, how, how much would you be investing in this front to avoid uh, this crisis or mitigate this crisis next winter? Yeah, you know, maybe maybe just to, to reflect on the, sh the, the supposedly shortage of Cat 3 pilots. Uh, I would say at Indigo, um, in general, uh, we were having enough uh, pilots and enough Cat 3 pilots. I think where we, we have seen this winter, a, a combination of a couple of factors. In the first place, the fog was, was longer, denser, uh, and much wider than we have seen before. And if you just look at some of the weather statistics and compare it to previous years, it just has been uh, a much more, much more intense and much more impactful than it was in, in previous years. And, and again, just look at some of the meteo statistics. And clearly, uh, with a growing industry, with a growing sector, that has had it, its effects. And then we come to airports, uh, and especially in the northern belt of India, where where the fog was was intense and was very persistent. Uh, and I think with that, uh, collectively as an industry, we should take some learnings from it uh, in terms of uh, of coordination, in terms of making sure that we have uh, the right uh, equipment everywhere, in terms of making sure that we have the right communication everywhere. So, um, and I think for us at Indigo, um, we, we took on, on quite a couple of, of flights. We took a deliberate call uh, not to cancel and to operate. Flights were full and we just wanted to make sure that, that customers were reaching their destination. And, and, and that, that resulted in that combination of, of actually quite a few delays and then when the system is disrupted. You know, if, if I take some of the other events we had, like the cyclone in uh, Chennai, we basically recovered after that one in, in like 36 hours. And that was, it had a massive impact. So I think in general, as a system, we are, we are ready and good to deal with it. There's always learnings to be drawn from it, which we'll surely do uh, also together with the airports. Right. Uh, 1.2 crore fine. That was the fine that was imposed on Indigo. There were fines imposed on other airlines as well. What are you doing to address these violations and make sure these don't happen in future? You know, of course, we, we uh, take learnings from whatever happened on the 14th. And I think I've mentioned before on the 14th, 14th of January, uh, that was the day it was, was, was linked to. Um, there's no single point of failure in these type of, uh, of, of situations. And I think all our staff was really doing their level best to make sure that customers uh, were getting on their destination. It was a situation which was unprecedented in terms of fog and impact on delays. And we're reviewing, of course, the, uh, uh, the fine which was imposed. We're engaged in, in discussions and evaluations, and we take it from there. Right. So uh, has Indigo paid up that fine? Again, we're evaluating and uh, there's a possibility to engage in the discussion and, and we take it from there. I, okay. I, I would not like to further speculate at this point in time uh, on that specific, uh, on that specific uh, topic. Right. I would also like to ask you about the grounding of aircraft and how are you dealing with that. But before that, the, the visuals that we have seen of uh, passengers having to eat food on the tarmac, uh, how would you address that? Because that had raised a lot of concerns from passengers on social media and otherwise, how would you address that? Well, let me be clear. It's, it is it is not Indigo who's asking customers to eat to eat on the tarmac. Mm -hmm. uh, there was an accumulation of events that day, and again, I, I rather don't go into the specific details. Accumulation of events which resulted in this, and and uh, there's various stakeholders and various um, uh, elements are involved in this situation. It's not Indigo asking customers to, to, to have food on the tarmac. Um, you have seen the image, we have seen the image. We're deeply evaluating what precisely has happened and how we, again, collectively as, a, as a, an aviation ecosystem can avoid this in the future. Right. Uh, 40 more aircraft are in the process of getting grounded. What, how is this going to impact your fleet going forward? What mitigation measures are you taking? You know, there's there's uh, uh, this this global supply chain challenge is there for for some time already. Um, there's in addition to that 
there has been some communication from uh, from the OEM on uh, additional inspections on engines to be done. Of course, that influences as Indigo. But what is important, I would say, is that at Indigo, we've taken a whole range of mitigating measures. And these mitigating measures have, have enabled us to live up to our capacity guidance. And I think we started this conversation by reflecting on the third quarter and the results of the third quarter. Um, the third quarter, we had a, a significant number uh, of, of uh, groundings due to supply chain challenges. Yet we have been able to grow 27%, and yet we have been able to achieve the results which we have achieved. So the mitigating measures which we have taken in terms of lease extensions, damp leases, keeping some, some planes in operation, reintroduction of some planes, have really helped us uh, to do that. And going forward, the order book of Indigo, where we, which we spoke about earlier, uh, with all these planes on orders and a plane coming in each and every week, are really helping us to mitigate this situation. So, of course, I would wish the situation was not there. Of course, I would wish that, that we would not have been confronted with this situation with the OEMs, for which we, of course, are in, in intense and, and long uh, discussions with them. But I think at Indigo, we have taken a whole range of mitigating measures, helping us to address it in the best possible way. My final two questions to you, Peter. Uh the challenges for the aviation industry globally, we're looking at a very difficult geopolitical environment. If there's one thing that worries you, looking at the geopolitics right now, what would that be? You know, I, I think the, the, the geopolitical situation and the various uh, uh, complexities in the world have different dimensions. I would, I would um, when you ask what is the effect on, on Indigo, I would say there's there's a couple of them. One, of course, is the the supply chain challenges, and the other one is the, the fluctuations in uh, in fuel prices. And um, I think those are the elements for Indigo. Right. And uh, finally, as uh, we as we conclude this interview, and as you engage with the Indian government on various issues, do you feel there are certain things? or maybe the top two or three things, according to you, which the Indian government can do to make sure that the aviation industry in uh, the country grows faster? You know, I think the Indian government has, has, uh, has accelerated a lot of initiatives over the past couple of years. And, and all these initiatives are now starting to bear fruit. The fact that the new airport will open in Delhi, a new airport will open in Mumbai, a whole range of new regional airports have been opened. Policies are being changed. So, so I would actually like to, to, to underline all these initiatives and all these efforts which have been taken. And I, I, would, I would say without many of these initiatives, um, this doubling towards the end of the decade would just not be possible. So we continue to build, and therefore I, I mentioned it a couple of times already, I think the ecosystem where all the parties have a, a specific role to play and the facilitation and the support given by, by, by the government when it comes to uh, infrastructure, when it comes to policies, when it comes to uh, making sure that the aviation industry continues to drive. And we started this interview with your question on the budget and the things which are related to that. I think that is all coming together and making sure that the ambition to build a global aviation hub in India and the geographical position and the size and the GDP of the country is really supporting that that will, will all come together in the years to come. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Peter Elbers, for joining us, giving us your view on the Indian aviation industry, what's going to drive the growth of Indigo, and how you're going to get at least uh, one aircraft per week. And that shows your confidence in the Indian aviation industry and India's potential as an economy. Thank you once again for being with us. With that, we come to the wrap of this uh, special broadcast. Thank you for watching and goodbye.